when Tang Dynasty came to power, they were extremely strong, as they sent messengers to the nearby tribes to collaborate with them. The economy and military strength rose at a rapid speed. Li Yuan, also known as Emperor Taizong, ruled with an iron fist. But however, one problem confuses him. You see, Li Yuan's getting old, and he hasn't really found himself a successor. He has four sons. The third prince died at a young age. His oldest son, Li Jiancheng, was promoted as crown prince. His second son, also the smartest, Li Shimin, was promoted as Prince of Qin, and his youngest Li Yuanji was promoted as Prince of Qi. Li Yuanji and Li Jiancheng hated Li Shimin mainly because of his mad skills in the military and his IQ level. A friend of a friend is a friend. An enemy of an enemy is a friend. So Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji became friends. They collaborated many times. One time, even planning to kill Li Shimin. Now, you might think two against one is obviously a match-winning advantage for this side, right? Wrong. Li Shimin was way smarter than both of them plus together. In fact, they were both really stupid. And Li Shimin got support from Qin Chung and Wei Shijingde, two of the most fierce warriors at the time. Li Shimin also saw those two people planning. They wanted to assassinate him at the Xuanwu Gate, and Li Shimin saw through all of this. So on the second of July, six hundred and twenty-six A.D., Xuanwu Gate incident happened. Here's what happened next. So in order to capture the Western Palace and Eastern Palace, Li Shimin would have to capture the Xuanwu Gate. Li Yuanji and Li Jiancheng decided to ambush in a forest next to it. Then Li Shimin came, but instead, prepared. So when you see Li Shimin wearing this cloak, he's actually wearing an armor underneath it. When you see him holding the stick, it's actually a proper weapon. So when you see Li Shimin going to the Xuanwu Gate like this, in reality, he's actually fully armed. Ambush soldiers came out of nowhere. Wei Zhijingde had to fight them. Li Shimin ran into the forest, chasing his own brothers. Li Jiancheng attempted to kill Li Shimin with an arrow, but he failed. Li Shimin killed him in one step. Li Yuanji attempted to kill Li Shimin, but Wei Shijingde killed him. Very nice. Li Shimin then stormed into the Xuanwu Gate and Western Palace. He also captured the Eastern Palace, and then he went into the Imperial Palace. He ordered his own father to resign from position. His father wasn't going to do that, but Wei Shijingde forced him. Li Shimin became the next emperor as Emperor Taizong. The military strength and economy increased more. And on the battlefield, Tang Dynasty extinguished large amount of territory from the Tubo. And in the north, Li Shimin sent large groups of cavalry division to campaign against the Xianbei tribes. The Xianbei lost battle after battle territory and was forced to retreat to the Mongolian plains. Li Shimin captured a large territory known today as the Nei Mongu Province. The North was united. However, though Li Shimin captured a lot of territory, the economy level slowly decreased. He was very unhappy, but no problem because it's Buddhism, a religion that comes from Asia, and somehow made the people not rebel. So Emperor Taizong sent a Buddhism lover Xuanzang to the far west, known as Tianzhu, or India today. Xuanzang departed in the year 630 and arrived at Lanzhou in a month, and then crossed the border in a month, arriving at the Fire Mountains, and then arriving at Uzbekistan. It seems that Xuanzang is going all the way to Moscow, but not really. He's just avoiding the evil Himalaya Mountains. At last, he was there. At Tianzhu, there he learned how to be a proper monk. After three years of education, he said goodbye to his students and left, arriving at Chang'an. He was greeted by Emperor Taizong himself. There he spread the arts of Buddhism. 
He said to his students, "I would rather die going to the west than live by staying in the east." The economy level made a slow recovery, but sadly, that month, Wei Shijing and Qin Chong both died. The Emperor Zhong died as well. The Golden Age period would end right there, because Emperor Taizong's son, Emperor Gaozong, wasn't as smart as him. And there was also a threat, not an enemy, but this time, a woman.